Hi, my name is Matt, and I'm one of the senior SharePoint engineers at FPWeb.net. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the new features of SharePoint 2016 and SharePoint 2016 with Feature Pack 1 installed. I'll do a quick demo of a few of these features so that you actually get to see what it looks like. So, in the interest of keeping things moving, let's jump straight into the demos. One of the more significant changes to SharePoint 2016 is the concept of MinRoles. MinRoles allows an administrator to select a server role and SharePoint will automatically start the appropriate services based on the selected role. It's a form of automated topology, or really more accurately, assisted topology. In SharePoint 2016 RTM, a minimum of four SharePoint servers was required to use MinRole. The feature pack introduced the idea of shared roles, so now only two servers are required to take advantage of this technology. That all sounds fine and good. Let's take a look at what MinRole looks like in action. So here's my SharePoint farm. Let's take a look at servers in the farm. As you can see, the feature pack is installed and that's why I can use MinRoll with only three servers. I initially started with two servers, Video Search and Video Web Front End. As you can see, these are using the shared server roles provided in the feature pack. I recently added the Video App Server and designated it as an application server. Let's add one more server to the farm. I'm going to add a server named Video App 2 and oddly enough, I will designate it as another app server. I've already installed the bits for SharePoint and the feature pack, so now all I have to do is run the configuration wizard and join it to the farm. Next. Yes. Connect to an existing server farm. Type in the database server alias. Use that database farm passphrase now here's where we select the role the dedicated roles were introduced in SharePoint 2016 RTM the shared roles are only available if the feature pack has been installed on the farm so for this particular server I'm going to click application everything looks good Next. Wow, that was fast. All right, now that the server has been added to the farm, let's take a look at what it looks like. Let's go back to central admin. There's the old one. And here's what the new topology looks like. Here's the new Video App 2 server. Notice SharePoint already started the appropriate services on the server. Now, let's go ahead and provision the user profile service application and see what happens. Navigate to Manage Service Applications, New User Profile Service Application. Type in the name of the service app. select an app pool, leave all other defaults because this is just a test, all looks good, go, done, thank you again. So, now if we check out servers and farm, Notice, the user profile service has been started on all servers that have the application mineral. Nice, huh? Now that the farm has two dedicated application servers, there's no need to have a server share both the search and the application role. So let's change video search to the dedicated search role. To do that, central admin, system settings, convert server role in this farm. For the video search server, use the drop down and change the new role to search. Click apply, wait. Done. No editing necessary. All 
All right, let's take a look. Now, notice the search application is not compliant. It looks like SharePoint left the user profile service application and the incoming email running on the server. To fix this, just click the fix link. Yes, fix it. Thank you. It's fixed. Now, video search is only running the necessary components for search. As you can see, Mineral can drastically decrease time spent managing SharePoint topology. One thing to be aware of, though, is trying to convert server roles involving the distributed cache and search. Role conversion can't enable, disable, or reconfigure the distributed cache service. It must be done manually before converting to or from the distributed cache role. Additionally, Role conversion can't convert a search server to a role that doesn't host search if that server is part of the active search topology. You must manually remove the server from the search topology prior to performing a role conversion. Other than those two gotchas, Mineral seems to work as advertised and is a welcome feature to SharePoint. SharePoint 2016 introduced a new feature called Fast Site Creation. It basically is what it sounds like. It drastically reduces the time required to create a site collection. This is accomplished by having all the magic occur at the content database level. There is no UI for this feature. It is only accessed through a series of new PowerShell commandlets. Before you can use fast site creation, you have to first run two commandlets. Enable SP Web Template for SiteMaster. This creates a template for a SiteMaster. I've already done this, specifying the default team site template to be the site master. After running that commandlet, you have to then create the site master by running new SP site master and specifying the content database. I've already done that as well. So now I'm at the point of actually creating a new site collection. First, let's take a look at the site collection list. As you can see, there's a site master defined. So now we're ready to create a new site collection using this site master to the SharePoint management shell. This uses the familiar new SP site, but notice the new parameter create from site master. We are telling it to use the template STSO I previously defined as the site master. I'm going to let this run in real time so you can see how fast it is. There it goes. Done. Around one minute. A significant increase when compared to not using fast site creation. Let's refresh the site collection list. There's our new site. Now let's browse to it. Success. One of the most requested features of SharePoint has always been admin auditing the ability to see who is making what changes to the farm and when they are making these changes. Microsoft finally gave us what we wanted in SharePoint 2016's Feature Pack 1 update. Let's take a look and see how it works. After you install Feature Pack 1, you will notice a new event trigger on the Usage and Health Data Collection screen. Administrative Actions. Conveniently, it's the first one in the list. After this event is enabled, admin actions will be recorded to the event log. There are several ways to view and filter the logs, but I'll just walk through a quick way that doesn't require additional software. First, open PowerShell. Now we want to add the SharePoint snapping. There we go. We are going to use the merge SP usage log commandlet and tell it to merge the data for the administrative actions usage provider. Unless you specify a start time, it will only show the last hour. This is just an example, so the past hour is sufficient. To make it easier to read the results, I'm going to save it to a text file. Click enter and wait while SharePoint does its thing. When it's finished, open the new text file in Notepad. As you can see, each event provides a decent amount of detail. The server where the event occurred, the responsible user, the action, and some other details. On TechNet, you can find a list of administrative actions that are now logged. 
In my opinion, these are some notable ones. There's others worth checking out, but these are the ones I can see myself digging through logs to find. For most SharePoint admins, admin auditing is a long overdue and welcome feature. In addition to the three new features we just went over, there are others in SharePoint 2016. Among them, some document library changes like a friendlier interface. You can now create a library template using the open document format. And really, probably the most welcome improvement in this category, large file support. The previous restriction of 2 gigabytes is gone. The new limit is now 10 gigabytes. According to Microsoft literature, this 10 gigabytes is non-configurable. There's improvements to hybrid configurations, making it easier to integrate SharePoint 2016 on-prem with Office 365. Basically, content and services can either be run in Office 365 or on-prem. You may want to do this for any number of reasons, including compliance or creating a corporate extranet. There's some minor, but in some cases significant changes to SMTP configuration. It's now possible for SharePoint to use encryption and you can configure a non-standard port. Some other changes. There's expanded support for file names, so there's even less invalid characters. Because of this change, it's now possible to have a file saved in SharePoint named Project Server is installed with SharePoint 2016 but it is licensed separately and will require a license in order to access the features. There's some improvements to sharing. You can now share when creating a folder, see who the folder is shared with when viewing the folder, and there's an improved invitation email. With every new addition and addition to SharePoint, there are always those features that are deprecated. So what's missing from SharePoint 2016? SharePoint Foundation. There is no free version of SharePoint. Forefront Identity Manager Client, or the FIM services. Those of us familiar with earlier versions of SharePoint have probably spent a good portion of our life troubleshooting user profile sync, so this comes as a blessing and a curse. With the removal of the FIM services, the only available user profile sync is a one-way import from AD to SharePoint. Obviously, this isn't a true sync as it only communicates in one direction. If a true sync is required, external tools are required. Excel services are no longer hosted in SharePoint. This functionality is now part of Office Online Server. This means if you are upgrading from SharePoint 2013 to SharePoint 2016 and you use Excel services, you must now also deploy OOS. And finally, STS ADM. They've been saying that since SharePoint 2010. Until they replace delete configuration object, I hope they really never truly get rid of STS-ADM.